Hello, happy Friday all. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. Thanks for joining me tonight, uh, where we relax and we craft and work on a project together every night here. So uh, tonight we are continuing on the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home block of the month. This is block two. Uh, this is the, the whole quilt will look, look something like this. So we've done block one already and now we're, we're just getting going on block two. I'm doing a combination of applique, needle turn applique and embroidery. So we have, we got the little tree on and the heart on yesterday and I'm hoping to do the small heart and the tree trunk will get started today. So that is the plan. We'll see how that goes. Uh, thanks again for joining me, guys. I appreciate you being here. It's so nice to chit chat with you every night. Uh, all right. Ooh, and my needles came in. So I ordered these straw needles. Uh, they're also called Milner's e uh, needles. I almost said emails. Milner's emails. Uh, but Milner's needles are straw needles. And they are a little bit longer than normal just sharps. So uh, I'm going to see if that works well for needle turn. A few of you have said that that is the needle go-to needle for needle turn. Uh, just a little bit longer needle works better. So finally came in the mail. Going to give those a test tonight. So, ooh, and I forgot to put that in the, the product list here. So I'll be sure to do that. Uh, there is a giveaway going on right now for block number two. Oh, first of all, if you want to sign up to do this with us. It is the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month. There is a link to sign up. It is free. You just sign up to her email list and she will send you the patterns, all the cutting instructions, and then the patterns for block one and two. Uh, block three and four will come later. There's four blocks total. And then we'll be making it into the quilt here as well. She has a giveaway for block two. To enter, you type in here in the comments, hashtag I love home quilt. It is a fat quarter bundle of Sarah J fabrics and you can look her up um, and her fabrics are just super cute. It's a $50 value of fabrics, which is amazing. So um, you can also look at the other bloggers. Uh, if you go to JacquelineSteves.com uh, or the link that I have above here, you can get to her blog post that has everyone involved in there. So you have more chances to win if you go to the other bloggers and sign up on their, their blog as well. Each blogger is giving away a bundle. So you can sign up and win um, at each of those places. So awesome. Thanks, guys. And uh, I will flip you around and let's get stitching. This is where we left off uh, last night. So we got the heart done and I am super duper happy with that heart. I don't think I've ever gotten my curves and my inner points uh, to look so nice. So I'm feeling good about that progress. So that was good practice to do that smaller heart. We already have the piece cut out, so we'll get going on that. But I wanted to show you these straw needles. So I got a pack of size five through 10 just because I wasn't sure on the size. So I got a variety pack. Um, unfortunately, they're not numbered. Um, I do know that the size five are the biggest ones because um, they match my size five embroidery needle as far as thickness. So I thought we'd try uh, one of the thinner ones. So the thinnest must be the, the size 10, which is here. And this is the next size up. So here's the difference between the straw needles or the Milner's needles and my needle that I've been stitching with so far. So this is, whoop, hold on my, I have round hands that don't wanna keep things flat. Okay, so here is the needle that I have been using so far. So you can tell just the difference in size already. I get uh, quite a bit more. I think this is more towards Ooh, where'd it go? Towards the larger size. Not the larger, but like, um, I think this is a 10. This, this one in the middle is probably 
a nine or an eight. And I think that's closer to what I've been working with. I'm gonna try this super skinny needle. So it is a little bit flexible just because it is so thin. And actually this one's a, a hair flexible too, but definitely significantly less flexible than the really skinny one. I thought just because it is skinnier than my original one, we'd give this one a go first just to see see what it's like with skinnier. If this just is too weird, like if I'm bending it too much or I'm not comfortable with it, then I'll switch to the slightly large, larger size, larger thickness, which I think is closer to what I'm currently using. But I'm excited to give it a go. I'm excited to see what the, how the, the length works, the longer, the longer length on the needle. Okay. Um, other than that, it's, it's basically the same needle. It's got a smaller eye. It's not like an embroidery needle. It's got a small eye and, and a sharp point too. It's not a blunted point. So um, in every other aspect, it's basically like my sharp, the sharps needle that I have. Just longer. All right, so I'm matching up my uh, uh, foreground, my applique lines with the, the back lines again. And I'm gonna throw my applique pin. We've been doing it with the applique pins. Um, I haven't been stitching these ones down, so that's kind of kind of new. Um, I'm gonna throw this applique pin in the back, and by putting it in the back like this to hold it, it's been really helping to not catch uh, my thread on on the needle at all. So we'll we'll start with it there. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up. It's kind of in my way at my starting point. We'll we'll put it kind of more towards this side because I think I'm gonna start. Oh wait, no, I'm gonna go right here because I'm gonna start on this side. So it'll be a little out of my way. Hopefully, we're kind of on still. Thanks for all the entries to the giveaway, guys. I'm I'm excited for that one. All right, I'm gonna. Eh, we're still on the lines yet. I was gonna scooch it over a little, but eh, I think we're I think we're okay. I'm gonna err like I did with this one. I'm gonna err on the side of uh, following this uh, the line that's drawn on on the background fabric versus my applique line. So when I tuck my my seam allowance under, I'm gonna. I'm gonna shoot for this line, not the other one. Um, I should, I do have enough seam allowance here that that should be okay. So let's get going. And thanks again, guys, for being here. I appreciate it a ton. And if this is your first time here, uh, again to introduce myself, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish. I'm penguinandfish.com uh, and penguin and fish everywhere. And uh, I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So, ooh, I definitely don't need this enough, need that much thread to make it around this heart. So let's make it a little shorter. Um, just from the get-go, it's, it's a smaller eye than I'm used to. So that was a little more difficult to thread, but using that pinch method of threading really kind of does the job. You ordered the light box! Oh, Gretchen, how exciting. You'll have to tell me, um, when it comes, you'll have to tell me how you like it. I Now that I know, you know, I did a little research on them, and now that I know that they're, like, cordless and LED and, and all that, I'm like, dang, I, I kind of want a new one now. <laughs> Mine's perfectly fine, but it's just neat. New gadget. All right, so I'm starting on the straightaway again here. I'm gonna start right in the middle because I'm gonna need enough leeway at the end to do this point, and I need enough leeway to work on this um, heart, or this the hump here. And you know what? Since we are so close to that, I think I might notch it out right away, like how we did last night on, on this side, and it laid a lot flatter than this side where we didn't do that. Oh my gosh, it was $19, awesome. So, a penguin and fish came from, in a, the name it came from an animation that I did in college called The Penguin and the Fish. And um, if you've ever got an email from me 
the video for that or the link for that is in the bottom of the video or of the email. And it's basically about a penguin and a fish who fall in love. And, uh, but then it turns out that the fish has to migrate a way, he has to migrate because they're like at the, in Antarctica and he's got to migrate away for the, for the winter. So somewhere that it's warmer. And um, so they're so sad, but he has to leave and uh, they keep in touch through email. <laughs> so they keep the relationship going. And uh, this is before social media and before, this is before iPhones when I, when I did this before cell phones that could text. <laughs> uh, loosely based on my husband and me in, in college. So that's, that's, uh, that's where the penguin and the fish come from. <laughs> so I just started this again with uh, coming up from the back and catching that fold. <laughs> Catching that little fold here and then going around that area one more time just to lock it in place. And then I'm um, to make a stitch, first I'm tucking the edge under, getting a nice, um, a nice edge that follows that line underneath here. And then I'm going just on the other side of that fold into the back fabric and then coming up a stitch length away and getting both the back fabric and that fold again, just a couple couple hairs on that fold. And that is a stitch. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and you guys, um, if you're on my newsletters, I think, oh, do I not have that at the bottom of my newsletters anymore? Oh, I might not have that there anymore. I'll have to put that, I'll have to put that back on my emails. Um, I might not have that on my new emails. Uh, so, okay, I'll have to put, I'll put that animation back on there. It's on my YouTube channel. Um, I never actually finished it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I never actually finished it, but I think I have the animatic as part of the video. An animatic is kind of the sketch of what you wanna have happen in the movie, timed out to how long each of those little bits would be in a movie. So like if you're familiar with a storyboard, like where people where people draw all the scenes and all the reactions and everything of a, of a movie, um, it's like that, but to time. So you can kind of watch the whole movie in real time as it plays out, but just in storyboard format. Anyway, I think I might've put, put that in there too. Took a lot of animation classes in college. I'd like to do more of that again, actually. All right, I think I may have cut my notches a hair too close again. So I got a little frayed little bits that I'm trying to work on here. But I think we're okay. I just gotta be careful tucking them under. All right, um, it's hard to see my line, but that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm using the, the back line anyway. So tucking, tucking these notches under. Yeah, and if you guys are just joining me, uh, the hashtag I love home quilt that people are popping up, that is to enter the giveaway for the Sarah J uh, fat quarter bundle. So that will go through, you can, you can hashtag I love home quilt on any of this week's, um, Facebook lives or the replays that includes the YouTube replays. You can do that through tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, wait, today's only Wednesday it's th through Friday. Um, Friday will be my last video, but you can do it through the replays through Sunday and I will be choosing a winner on, on Monday. Um, I won't be announcing it on Monday, but I will, um, choose it and let the winner know. And then I have to, uh, I have to let Jacqueline know and she'll let me know if, um, that same person won anywhere else. And if not, then, then they're the winner. Um, so I just snipped right into where the, 
the most inner point is here. And now I'm going to start flipping the edges under. Uh, so far, um, so far I'm not, <laughs> it's not like you're going to, to wash away this quilt with those tiny frays. Well, yeah, that's true. Well, I might, I mean, I don't know. I might wash this. I mean, I am intending to use this. I like using the blankets, but you know, if thing, little things fray here and there on my blankets, I'm, you know, it's not going to kill me. Um, so far, I'm liking the new needle. Uh, if you guys are wondering at all what I'm doing here, just, just shout it out. I'm kind of going a little quick today because we, we worked on this yesterday, but I am folding, folding the, as I'm approaching this centerpiece, I'm folding the opposite end further back than it needs to be. And that helps getting that inner point. And as I approach the inner point, I'm going to switch from going down to up and then go from up to down through the fold because that downward motion on the fold will help um, have not those little frayed little bits come popping up on me. Um, so far I'm liking the needle. Uh, actually on this little bit up here when I was kind of dealing with all those little frayed bits, the bend in the needle, because it does have some flex to it, that actually kind of helped me a little because I could go under and kind of bend it back up to grab something a little closer than I needed it to. So um, I don't know, maybe that little little bend in here is a good thing, but I don't know. I'll let you guys know uh, as we keep going how I like this thing. And I have a tendency to bend needles. So, um, you know, if by the end of this we have a needle that's like a 45 degree thing, um, we might have an issue. So the, if that's the case, then I'll bump up to the next up the size that's a little fatter, but you know, or I'll just buy, you know, a ton of size 10 needles. So uh, Patricia, I am using, I just got these in the mail. They are straw needles, also called Milner's needles. I got a variety of sizes. This is a size 10 that I'm using right now. I'm just gonna get my old needle um, that I've been stitching with. So again, this is this is the needle that I, I have been stitching with. Let's see if I can get close again. If I put my hand here, sometimes it focuses better. So that's the needle I've been stitching with the last few nights. This is the new straw or Milner's needle. And um, so it's quite a bit longer, which is great so far. And this one's a little thinner. It's a size 10. Um, so a tiny bit thinner than I was using. And I thought I was using something pretty thin. If you want to compare it to my embroidery needles, if you have any of my kits, this is the size of the embroidery needle. Oh, I'm stabbing myself. Uh, the embroidery needle is a size five, so quite a bit thicker. And I mean, the eye is obviously larger too, but um, quite a bit thicker than, than the 10. So anyway, that is what I'm using here. Is there a big shadow you're seeing? Big shadow. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm... Uh, yeah, maybe I moved the lights over a little bit. I don't know. I'm still trying to play with play with that a little bit. If it's, if it's too weird, I might have to put a light behind me too. All right. So now I'm going to start... I'm going to come up through the back and not, not the fold. And I'm going to tack it downward because if I go upward to grab that fold, I may um, pop up all those little frayed bits. And I'm just gonna shape the center a little bit more and I think we'll just go right in the center now. Again, coming up through the back only. And then I'm gonna tack it down through this point. Ooh, I want to make sure I'm not accidentally hooking on the needle or anything, or the pin. All right, and then I'm going to go one more time through that that center point, that inner point, just to um, hold down that piece. And I'm, I'm just double checking that I'm not catching it on the needle, the pin, uh, because I am I am doing it a little differently where where the thread goes in the back now for these these little bits here. Oh, to you, it's darker than normal. 
it might be a Facebook thing because um, Facebook kind of auto auto kind of um, changes light. So it could be just Facebook deciding that it's it was too bright to start out with. Okay. Oh yeah, Phyllis, I'm totally loving that that tip too. Someone um someone someone from here, if you're in the house, let me know. But uh, told me about that while we were doing, while I was learning needle turn basically, uh, while we worked on the splendid sampler and man, that tip kind of changed my world a little bit because I had, um, I had frayed bits all over the place. I was not doing well on these inner, inner points. And that little tip kind of, um, helped out so much. And I'm still, I'm still doing that right now, that going from the back and then tacking downward. And right now I'm going to go back to normal. Oh, it does look like it's a shadow or messed up light here. Maybe if I, I might be able to tap this and refocus. I don't know if it's, going to do anything though. Eh, it doesn't look like the light's changing color. Oh well. Um, all right. You know what? I forgot to notch out this side. So I think I'm going to do that. I think it's looking okay on, it'll look okay on the YouTube replay. I, I don't think that looks too shadowy. So if you're having trouble here and need it a little lighter um, on the YouTube replay, it'll be a little bit better. The YouTube replay, what that actually is, it's, um, it records exactly what my, my phone sees when I record these. So you get to see what I'm seeing. It looks like, it might be Facebook, it looks like you're not centered with your light. Yeah, I don't know. It's the same, it's the same as what I had last time. So I think it, it probably is just Facebook being a little funny tonight. Um, I don't know. Trying to learn as I go with the lighting and sound and all that sort of stuff. So, um, I'll have to look at the lighting again. I think the front view is looking okay now. Um, but yeah, this, this above view, maybe I should work on a little bit. Okay. We are ready to go again. And I'm kind of going towards me a little bit more tonight. My lights are actually over there. So when I tilt like this, I don't have any light from coming, coming from this backside. All right. But I have, I saw a little video on, on fixing that the other day though. Maybe I'll have to, maybe I'll have to invest in some more lights again. All right. So I'm just shaping, shaping my heart curve here. I'm trying to get it so there's no little points in. All right, there we go. Now I will tack it down. So now I'm going back from, I'm, I'm going from the underneath, I'm grabbing both the uh, back fabric and the fold fabric. And I'll keep going around. So the one thing with this needle is I am, it's like a really fine needle and it's pretty sharp, which is great, but I feel like I'm stabbing myself, stabbing my, my finger a little bit more. I mean, not to the point that I'm, it's like poking into me, but I'm noticing that I have to be a little more careful to not like go right through my finger skin on the other side of, of, um, the fabric here. It's hard to just catch the fabric cause I'm catching my finger too. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, I'm doing smaller stitches around this curve, but I think we're almost around. I'm trying to tuck with the needle too, and, and that's definitely much easier with this longer, much, much, much easier with the longer uh, needle here. So that is worth it. All right, that's a little kind of bumpy there yet. Let's work on that. That explains it. Oh, you can see the tree really well in the light. Yeah, because the light is coming from over there. Yeah, I think I need, um, I think I need a little light 
above me behind my head I don't know our this is my little itty bitty dining room like it's a very very small space and it's got just these wacky big lights in it it's just so odd so I suppose why not rig up another one to be on the ceiling in the back behind me and pointing down <laughs> that's not weird at all right all right I think I got some weird little knot in here somehow I don't know how that kind of happened but all right it's small enough the knot that it's going through. All right, we're almost to the straightaway, which is nice. That's the easy part. I'm trying to tuck it under here. I'm still using the background as a guide, and I think I need to tuck it more than what I drew on the front here. So our seam allowance is, I think, much bigger than it needs to be. Oh, this is the needle that you use. Oh, you get used to stabbing yourself in the finger and grabbing your skin. Um, stray number 10. Yep, um, it's a stray number, uh, a straw, not a stray. It's a straw number 10. I'm like, stray, that sounds a little funny. It's a straw number 10. It's also called a Milner's. I think that's, as far as I know, that's the same thing as a straw. So if you look up Milner's, you know, like as in the hats, and um, or straw, and, and you'll find it. And, and this really skinny one is a number 10. Oh, you went up to the 11. So that, oh gosh, 11. So that's even smaller, right? Um, they get smaller, don't they? Isn't that, that's how needles work, right? They get smaller, yeah, for sure. They get smaller as the number gets bigger because I'm used to using a size five and that's quite a bit bigger than this. Um, size 11, I would think that would be super duper flexible. I mean, this is, very flexible. The nice thing about this 10 is that it is really skinny, so it is definitely going through this fabric nicer. Um, you know, it doesn't have to get a big ol' um, the wide shaft here through through the fabric. All right, it's going well. Yeah, and, and it is bendy. I'm thinking that if I did... Um, if I did, if I was doing this like all day long or something, I'm thinking I'd, I'd, I would have a pretty good bent needle when I'm done here, but uh, it's actually, it seems like it's holding up so far. Like I am putting pressure on it and it doesn't really look bent, all that bent yet. So it does feel flexible, but it doesn't feel, it's not like a beading needle. I don't know if you've ever um, worked with a beading needle before. They're very long and thin and definitely bendy. It, it doesn't feel like that. I'm liking it. I like the 10. Oh, oh, that's interesting, Gina. Okay, that's good to know. So for bullion, bullion knots um, in embroidery, they're those cute little, they're like French knots, but with a bajillion loops. Um, those are a lot easier when the eye of the needle is the exact same size as the shaft because you're pulling it through all those loops and, um, apparently these have the same size. So these would look, these would work well for Boolean knots. Oh, I'm going to have to give that a try. All right. We're approaching that, that, um, end. I just want to poof out this seam allowance on the other side here, so it's not in my way on this side. Although by doing that, I just kind of frayed it a bunch. Oh, once you discovered straw needles, you re-liked re applique. Well, that's cool, that's interesting. Yeah, so far, I'm, I'm really liking it. So I am putting some smaller stitches on this side uh, as I approach the point because then when I stuff all this fabric underneath there, it won't accidentally pop it out this other side. I've seen that everyone that does quilt uses Aurifil threads, but I was wondering if there's another brand, same as Aurifil. Um, there are, I mean, I don't know much about quality. I've just heard people talk about the Aurifil and all that. I, I am only using it because I, I have it. It was, it was, um, I got it when I worked on the Splendid Sampler because they were one of the sponsors for the Splendid Sampler. All right, I'm gonna just trim the back of this a little bit. I'm gonna trim some of this excess off. Uh, 
So far, I'm liking the 50 weight. I haven't used 50 weight before. I did buy some um, Gutterman 50 weight from Joann's uh, to use for my, my the, to quilt my Splendid Sampler. And I don't know, that seems fine so far. I guess I don't, I'm not the best person to ask for all the, the perfect quality of that stuff, but I do know that I'm, I'm liking it so far. Did I go around this twice? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, it's not at, it's not at my local Joann's, which is my local store here. You like hat thread? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you like that thread. Um, got it. Uh, you like, you like Orphil. Yeah, everyone seems to like Orphil. I'm, I mean, like, I talk to a lot of designers and stuff, and, uh, I mean, everyone seems to like Orphil, but I don't know if that's because there's sponsors for it, or, you know, Orphil does a good job at getting the word out, or, or what. Um, I have no real technical reference for, um, for it, but so far I'm, I'm really liking it. Oh, you're a quilter. Oh, you do love Gutterman. I mean, I, I, I really couldn't tell you. I can tell you I like it, but it's not like I've done a test of like a bunch of quilts using different stuff. Like I haven't done enough to, to feel um, the difference that like what other quilters say. So, um, but other quilters seem to really, really love it. And I hear it recommended the, the most. Okay. So you're saying it doesn't it doesn't fray or twist. Um, oh, you never tried Orafil. All right, this is my last last stitch. This was an itty bitty heart. This is a good warm up though for those tree branches because that's that's going to be a little bit of a bear, I think. But same technique as this, so I think we'll be okay. Thanks for applying for the giveaway, Janice. All right, let's tie a little knot in the back here. All right, for sure, loving the longer length needle. Um, I kind of wish I would have done that a long time ago. Um, I'll get back to you on the flexibleness of this number 10, but in general, I like the size of the number 10 just because it is real small. It goes through the fabric super nicely. Loving the length, um, not sure about the flexibleness of it all yet, but I'm sure I'll have an opinion, opinion soon. Okay, so that's what I've heard from a lot of people that there's a lot less lint with, um, with Aurifil. Oh, you didn't like it for your paper piecing project. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I, I don't think it can be at Joann's. It's, I, I haven't seen it at Joann's, um, Aurifil. I've only seen it online and at, um, quilt shops. So I did not, I did not get it at Joann's. Superior bottom line, 60 weight is great for applique. Oh, 60 weight. So 60 weight is actually thinner than um, the 50 weight. So that's interesting. Um, maybe I'll try and find some 60 weight before we start the English paper piecing project on the, on the 18th here. We can give that a test. And just the reminder, we will be doing that project on the 18th. I should, um, I'll start putting that link in, in my, um, in my Facebook, uh, links from, um, you know, after this video, cause that's going to come up quick. So on the 18th, um, on the 18th, we're going to start the uh, wise craft. Uh, Blair Stocker, we're gonna we're do we're gonna do her English paper piecing um, project from her her book, and it's just so pretty. Um, that's gonna be fun. Um, all right, so we're gonna do this tree. I just got got my uh, thing out here again, just to kind of eyeball the placement of it. Um, I have to look into that, Gretchen. I'm, I'm going to read her instructions from the book. I have her book. I'm going to read the instructions tomorrow and uh, see, see what is recommended in the instructions. Um, I'm just planning on using scraps. So um, 
all the, I mean, it's English paper piecing, so all the pieces are like this size or smaller. So you'll just need scraps of fabric like this size or smaller. And I think, how many pieces are there total? There's, oh, I don't know. There's probably around maybe 40 or so pieces. I don't know. Not, not like an over the top number of pieces. Um, so I would just look for, I would look for a couple contrasts. Um, I, you know, again, I'll get back to you, you more on this because I haven't thought too much about it, but I would look, I would find some scraps, just use some fabric scraps that, um, maybe pick out some that are really light and some that are really dark. That would be a pretty, pretty contrast. Like you could do the center, a dark, and then the next round lights and then the next round darks, something like that. Or you could do the same thing with color. Like you could do... Um, some contrasting colors, or you could start like dark pink in the middle, and then as you go out, it gets lighter and lighter to like a light gold or something. You know, so there's so just think about it as some stages. So I would think um, think about it from the center going out sort of thing. Um, what would be fun to see? Would it be fun to see highly contrasting colors? Would it be fun to see an ombre? Would it be fun to see? you know, going from black and white to bright color, or would it be fun to see just a pile of flowers? Um, I would just look at your scraps and um, kind of think through the scraps with that kind of point of view. That's, that's my plan. Um, I'm gonna bring my scrap bin upstairs here. I think I'm gonna use all uh, Penguin and Fish old fabric scraps. I've been trying to work my way through those. Uh, and I don't know, maybe I'll, I think I'm gonna do pretty bright colors just cause that's what a lot of my fabrics are, but I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how it goes. But uh, I, I'll look into that. I'm gonna read the instructions tomorrow and I will let you know tomorrow uh, what it has to say for, for fabric. And I'm sure once we get closer, I'm thinking Blair on her blog, the Wisecraft, I think it's Wisecraft, Wisecraft vlog? I don't know. I'll put links up here tomorrow as well. Um, I think she's starting to post more about it as well. So I'm hoping she'll she'll keep us updated on all that. Okay, I am going to... I just put this pin here temporarily just to hold it down while I do this back pinning. I think I have it positioned okay. When English paper piecing, I use... Ooh, I missed that. Um, I use the bottom line from Superior Threads. Oh, six, bottom line Superior Threads 612. It's a neutral thread color that goes with everything. Okay, thanks for that advice. How do you like doing these videos? Was it weird at first? I watch a lot of stuff on Facebook. Oh, I love feeds. Um, yeah, I love the live feeds too. Um, you know, the first time I did a live stream, I swear I was gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> Like I was like my, I, my finger literally hovered over the go live button for a few minutes. And then I had to go like walk around and then come back <laughs> and do it. Like I was so petrified. This was back when it was still Periscope that I was on, but oh my God, that was super scary. And then after that, you know, and especially when, you know, someone came in I'm like, oh, I'm talking to someone. This is fun, and they're saying stuff, and we are chit-chatting. Um, it got so much easier, but holy cow, that first time, like, it kind of makes my tummy rumble a little bit thinking about it. <laughs> it's freaking me out a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that first time was scary, for sure. But then afterwards, I'm like, oh, this is fun. Okay. Um, I think that's attached enough. You know, I think I'm going to start at the bottom here. I think I'm going to just start right at the bottom and go, go up. Um, I don't have to actually stitch the bottom part because it's going to be covered up. So, um, so it's okay if I start right on the corner here. Usually I wouldn't start on a corner because it would be a bear to flip it all under underneath when I'm done, but I'm not going to do that again because it's going to be covered up. So I'll probably start stitching up to here, then remove this pin. And I'm not sure I'll need to pin it anymore, um, except for that one up there. So, all right, I think, I think uh, that's the line, or that's, oh, I missed a bunch of your comments. Um, 
Oh, you love my voice. Thanks, Mary. Okay, so you got the superior threads from the local quilt shop. Um, how many years? Oh, so this is about two and a half years that I've been on live, live streaming almost every night. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I will, um, I'll do a little search for the bottom line superior thread when we're done here and I'll, I'll, uh, try and put a link in here. I mean, obviously it's always best if you can find it at your local quilt shop. Um, cause then you're supporting local businesses and it's nice to have a quilt shop in your area. Um, but yeah, if you live overseas or don't have anything in your area, then online is always great. So yeah, so it's, what is it? Superior bottom line. And then I'll, I'll have to look, I'll look, I'll go through the comments again to, to see what you recommended. MK, do you go by MK or, or how should, how should I call you? <laughs> um, MK. Try to, try to get pronunciations and names right, but MK. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Patricia. Yeah, I started a little bit, um, a little bit after live streaming got going. You know, this is another really thin, um, thin strip, and I think my seam allowance is, seam allowance might be just a hair too big. I'm going to trim it. I know this is going to look crazy. I'm going to use my giant scissors. Oh, it's Mary Kate. Okay. Um, oh, well, let me know what you prefer. If you prefer um, MK, I'll, I'll say MK, but if you prefer um, Mary Kate, let me know. Um, I'm just going to trim the seam allowance a bit. We'll just start there. <laughs> I might have to trim it as we go. And maybe I shouldn't use that big scissors. It's kind of weird. All right. So I'm just starting to tuck this straight away. And I'm going to use that background line as my guide again. You know what? I might have some samples of superior threads now that I think about it. Okay, MK, I will, I will, I'll stick to MK. Oops, I should have started a little lower, but this is okay. I was going to start a hair lower to make sure that it was stitched below the line, but it's not going to be the end of the world if I start here either. I'm just going to go around that same spot one more time. Ah, stabbed myself again. All right, straight away. All right, so we'll work on this a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get to that first inner point tonight. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. All right, you know what? I'm already going to remove that pin. It's already in my way. Actually, I might move it up a little higher. It's still a little too wiggly to not have the pin. I'm just going to pin it up here. There we go. Oh, I know. Isn't this, doesn't this, uh, this fabric works perfectly for a tree trunk. I thought it was, um, this is all fabric I had in my stash. And when I saw all the trees, I'm like, Ooh, that's a goofy fabric. I don't know what else I would use that goofy tree fabric for. Let's use it for an actual tree. So I think that worked out just right. Um, I'm using the gray thread just because, um, it's the most neutral, blendable thread that I have on hand. Uh, it, it pretty much blends in with all the applique pieces that I'm using, the dark ones and the slightly lighter ones. I have a lighter one, oops, a lighter one that matches kind of the background fabric a little bit more, but I think you're supposed to, I think it looks better supposedly if you match the, the applique piece and I've kind of found that to be the case. So yeah, I'm not perfectly matched. I could, I could have found like a dark brown for this and, you know, a peach for that other heart and all that. But, um, 
I think this gray kind of blends in enough with everything. Oh, I think I, I missed some bit. Um, oh, you know, I'm not, oh, what was that about the paper piecing? I'll have to, Connie, you'll have to ask me that again. Um, but I'm not sure she's making this quilt. We talked about it and she talked about, or she downloaded the pattern so far. So, so she signed up for it um, and is receiving the patterns. But you know what? I'm not actually sure if she started yet. Huh, I'm gonna have to ask her. I don't know why that hasn't come up yet. <laughs> oh, Connie, were you saying that you're nervous about English paper piecing, like stitching through the, the fabric layers? Or the, uh, not the fabric layers, the, um, the paper pieces, the paper layers. It, it really is easy. Um, oh, you're afraid of the paper piecing. Okay. Both of you then for sure have to do this project or at least, at least watch on it. Um, it is way easier than what we're doing here. I think, I think it's way easier than this needle turn for sure. Um, and uh, I learned a pile of tricks on the Splendid Sampler for that as well to make it even easier. Uh, English paper piecing, so I'll have to scrounge up that data that's stored in my head somewhere and uh, and um, we'll do it. it. It really is simple and relaxing. The Actually the hardest thing for me <laughs> is holding the pieces because this motion for my hands doesn't feel as good as, um, you know, my thumb is more down here when I hold this fabric, but this this pinch motion isn't as easy. But um, you can hold it together with wonder clips and all this other stuff. But that's the only thing personally for me. Um, the technique of it all is um, it is it's it's um, it's relaxing and it is um, easier than this. I think easier than needle turn. Oh, you love how it looks and want to do it. Oh, well, this is this would be a fun project to do it. Um, a lot of people like starting with um, the hexagons for English paper piecing because it is it is easy to do the the hexagons. They're they're a good shape because it all has obtuse angles in it. No none of the skinny acute ones. Um, oh man, I keep catching the bottom of of my tree here. Um, so this one will have a few more different pieces in. But that'll be fun. I, I actually really love paper piecing that isn't all, all hexagons. I mean, that looks lovely, but it's kind of, um, it's fun. It's fun, all the shapes. The neat thing about English paper piecing compared to, you know, just normal sewing, I guess, or, or uh, foundation paper piecing is that it's all about those Y seams, like it's so easy um, comparatively to do Y seams, which is basically when, when your seam meets up at an odd point and you have to start the other angle um, versus just sewing a straight line. Um, that's super easy to do with, with English paper piecing. So it's just another, it's another fun look and a fun, fun technique. And it's, it's going to go quick and it's, it is relaxing. And you can do it in different ways. Like you, you can prep all your pieces first, um, or you can prep a piece and then stitch it right away. Uh, Jenna, I have not heard anything about the missing pieces yet. I will, um, I'll message her tomorrow because I, I have not heard back anything either. And, and that's coming up. So. Um, there was, so to do the English paper piecing project, you do need to purchase the template, paper template things. Cause you can't, it's not available for download anywhere. You have to buy the paper templates and the paper templates had an error in them. So they were missing, um, they were missing one of the size pieces that we needed. Um, so that's a problem. <laughs> so they were going to take care of it this week, but I will I will check on that Jenna and see what the state of the state is for for that. Cuz yeah, we're going to we're going to need them by the by the 18th. And if we don't have them, um 
we can kind of still start on the middle pieces and work out for there. I don't think we need those the missing pieces till a little bit later, but ideally it would be nice to have it all together and kind of lay it out and stuff. Oh yeah, so September 18th, I will be starting the live streams here. And Blair, who is the designer, is also going to be doing doing um, a few live streams here and there. So I think her live stream, and she's going to go over her methods and how she picks fabric. So um, they're going to be interesting to watch. I'm going to watch them or at least watch the replays if I can't make it live. Because it's always interesting to see how other people do a technique. I always learn so much from that. Um, okay, if you go to the Wisecraft blog and go to the hand-stitched posts, this is called the hand-stitched um, English paper piecing project. Uh, I think she has links on where to get the, the um, templates there. And you know what? I will put the templates, I will put links here when I'm done with the video tonight and I'll start from now on until the project, I'll start posting info on the project um, here as well. I kind of, um, time's just catching up on me again. I can't believe it's, it's like we're into September quite a ways already. <laughs> Isn't it nuts? It's just kind of crazy. All right, I'm on the tree area now, the leaves. I'm gonna attempt so only grab the tree fabric and not all the way through to the back. But if that doesn't happen, then that's okay. You saw the layout page and printed that to help. Oh, with color placements. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, you're a total newbie with English paper piecing. Oh, then this will be good. It'll be, um, it's gonna be fun. It's just gonna be fun to play with color and everything too, I think. All right, um, let's see. I, I do need to, we're getting real skinny here. Like look how skinny this um, line is. I mean, my seam allowance here is bigger than this line. So I definitely need to trim seam allowance again. So I'm gonna do that now. Just trim a hair off of that. I think we can still make it up to this point. I'm gonna stitch up to the point here. And then I think that'll be a good place to start tomorrow because we'll, we'll have to slice into here, um, work on that. I'd like to do that in one sitting and same with these other bits. So um, yeah, I'll go up to here tonight. And I think uh, by end of day tomorrow, I think we should be well into stitching, stitching this guy on the bottom. That's our last applique piece. Geez, I think I'm just realizing that now. That's exciting. Yeah, then some embroidery and we got this thing going. Okay, so one thing I'm realizing is that I probably should have drawn on the tree line. I probably should have drawn this on, like retraced it um, onto my tree because I'm, I don't have a guide right now for placement. So I'm depending on my pin being in the right place. I mean, I do still have my lines just barely, they're kind of rubbing off, but I do have my lines on here that I'm using, but I should have, I should have redrawn my, um, my background line, my blue line onto the green fabric here, but I think we'll manage. We will, we will make it. It's a lot easier with this thin needle to kind of feel feel what's happening on the back. Like I can tell, I can tell when I'm through only the the green fabric and not all the way through both fabrics. So that's kind of neat. More sensitive touch, I guess, to it all. Almost to the top there. I love doing these straightaways though. They are sure are easy compared to compared to the curves. Yep, make it your own. I could be veering, it'd be like this whole curved tree on the top and I don't know, we'll have to see how it see what it looks like when I'm done here. So I'm going right up to that point and then doing that double stitch at the point. 
it'll be just like turning those points at the bottom of these hearts, but not as extreme because it's a 90 degree angle and not like a 120 degree angle or something. So um, should be easier. But yeah, I'm going to just stitch. I got this last stitch here. So, all right, here I'm at the point on my drawing. I'm going to go around that once to lock it in place. There we go. And um, there we are. So I think uh, I think we'll stop that tree there. Oh my God, I'm loving it. It's so cute. I love I love just this arch that's going up here. Yay, I'm excited. Let's let's peek at how skinny this guy's gonna be. So it's gonna be all the way in like like that. Oh my God, look how tiny. Itsy bitsy. Oh, it's fun. I love it. I think it's super cute. So far, so good. So, um, but here's where the technical parts are gonna come up. And you know what? While we're still here, I think while I can still see these lines, you know what? First of all, I don't need, need this pin anymore. We are stitched up enough, but I am going to just reinforce these lines again because they are, my, my hands are rubbing all over this fabric. So they are getting a little difficult to see. And I want to make sure I can see what I'm doing when I work on these these inner inner points. So little uh, future self is gonna is gonna thank me. <laughs> and I think I might go all the way down to here too. I mean, once we get here, I mean, I I kind of can't see my line all that well, but we have we have this blue guide again. So as long as I can get all this stuff up here to be kind of visible. So, all right, I can see it a lot better now. That's gonna be helpful. All right, so tomorrow, that's what we'll do. We will cut to these inner curves, do some of these points. Oh, it'll be cute as a family tree. Oh, what I was thinking, what I was thinking today, if it wasn't so small, you can embroider like a little heart in there. Um, oh, that's nice, oh, that's awesome. Thanks you guys for the shares, I appreciate it a ton. Uh, but like I was thinking it'd be cute to put like a little heart with like some initials. Maybe I still will. There might be, you know, just like here, we'll we'll draw it in here. Maybe with like one single strand of embroidery floss, maybe I'll stitch in like a J plus A there. Up in the tree. <laughs> Way up high in the tree. I think that would be kind of fun. <laughs> We'll add that. I think maybe it would work better. Ooh, how about like this instead? You know, because in theory, you know, a tall giant is gonna, you know, this is as, this part is as high as the roof. Who's gonna climb up there and do it? But down here, I could do it vertical. So like J plus A or A plus J. Oh, that's pretty cute. Okay, I'm totally doing that. We'll, we'll stitch like with one strand of thread probably. Oh, maybe we'll try the three strands then it'll stand out a little bit more, but We'll, we'll stitch that in, in our tree <laughs> when we get to, when we get to the embroidery. So if I forget about that while we're doing embroidery, make sure uh, to remind me because I'll be sad if I forget about that. Um, so, all right, this is the tree. We'll get this guy on. I think we'll get started on him tomorrow. And then we'll be, be to embroidery land. Um, I'm digging it. I think this heart turned out really well too. So I'm feeling, feeling way more confident about my, my inner points and my curves. Um, feeling good about that. So that's a good way to step into, um, uh, these really acute inner points here. So, all right, that is the plan for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to flip you guys around and we will call it an evening. Oh, Mary Alice, your daughter's name, granddaughter's name is Alyssa. Nice. My mom said that uh, she named me Alyssa and then everyone was naming their kids Alyssa after that. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, here we are. We got our two little hearts. Our tree is halfway done. We got the green done already. Oh, I'm thinking it's going to just be so sweet. What an itty bitty applique piece. I'm, I'm liking it. Um, Oh, it's going to be, the tree is going to be thick because there's all that seam allowance underneath there, there too. So awesome. Um, I think this will be really fun. We're uh, cruising through this applique. 
Uh, I think we're going to be done with this sooner, sooner than later, which is great. Maybe I can fit in a day of uh, doing the, the border sewing on my splendid sampler quilt. We'll see if there's a day or two in between um, getting this project done and the English paper piecing project. We'll see. <laughs> but that'd be a, a little bonus. Um, okay. So I will uh, check you guys out tomorrow. Thanks again for joining me. If you did not sign up for the giveaway, um, you can do that you know, here now still while I'm still live or during the replay, just click, uh, type in hashtag I love home quilt. That will count as an entry and you can do that every night this week for an additional entry and also on my, my YouTube page, uh, which is Penguin and Fish Movies. That's where all my replays are living. So uh, that is that. They will also stay here on Facebook as well. So have a great evening, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Can't believe it's going to be Thursday already. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great, uh, have a great day tomorrow. Good night.